Thank you for staying with us. Now, the House of Representatives has picked holes in the explanations by the federal government on the status of the 15 Chinese doctors and health workers who came into the Nigeria on April 8, 2020, to assist the government in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The Minister of Interior, Raul Varigoshola, said the Chinese medical personnel who are guests of the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, the CCECC, came into the country to assist in building and equipping isolation centers. However, the whereabouts of these experts recently sparked controversy when the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniwe, requested reporters not to bother his ministry about them. And joining us to discuss this this evening is social and political analyst, Mr. Wale Fatade. Thank you, Mr. Wale Fatade, for joining us on the show. Thank you for inviting me, Benny. Glad to be here. Thank you for joining us now. You, 15 Chinese doctors and health workers came into Nigeria on April 8, 2020, with a claim of coming to assist the government in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The House of Representatives has picked holes in the explanations by the federal government on this. What do you make of all of this Chinese business in respect to why they came in the first place, Mr. Wali Fatari? I, I And I like, Benny, I like the way you phrase that question, Chinese business, because that's what it has become. It's become a transaction now. And by the way, I'm not sure these guys are doctors again. And the timeline you supplied, when they were coming, the ex-minister told us specifically that these guys were doctors. And they were coming to share in their expertise. But now he told us they are, they, they've come to build isolation centers. Or I think it was his internal affairs counterpart. And you begin to wonder, don't we have enough builders in Nigeria that cannot build isolation centers? What we have seen of isolation centers, I don't think that is any extraordinary, you need any extraordinary building skills that, I mean, for you to do those ones. And I saw the, the patronizing way the, the minister, the internal affairs now, spoke to journalists yesterday, saying Nigerian journalists are always curious, always wanting to know. That is their duty. I mean, and I speak as a journalist now. That is their job. I remember again, day before yesterday, the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, said the same thing, too, that we should stop asking questions about that. And I think something must be said of the condescending attitude of our public servants. And so we, we've seen the stories mutating. It has changed forms. Whether uh, it's, it, they were ministers, I mean, they were doctors, they are technicians, they are these. And you actually have the, the insulting comment that the CCEC guy, that they are their guests, they are with them. I mean, when they were coming in, the, the, the federal government allowed them to come in with the airpiece plane, I think. So why can't you have a charter flight that will take them out? And I think there is a story there for Nigerian journalists to keep digging and digging. It's, it's, it shows the way our ministers think of us. It shows the way this government treats Nigerians contemptuously. And they are, it's very contemptible of them. They, they don't need that though. And that's why we could be tossed to and fro. It could be, nobody is sure of anything in the game. And I like the other reps for the stand they took yesterday. And I hope the Minister of Health will be there to brief them. Now, interestingly, the, the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniwe, on 14 May, which was last week, Thursday, requested reporters not to bother his ministry over the whereabouts of Chinese medical experts who came into Nigeria to support the fight against COVID-19. What was your take on the Minister's recent twist of statement, Mr. Wale Fatade? I, I think it's, it's, it's dishonest. And it's quite unfortunate that a public officer, a public servant, will speak like that. And I saw his discomfort that day. I watched the briefing the by the presidential tax force on COVID-19. And he, he, you were the ones that, I mean, he was the one that told us that these were these people coming. And by the way, I refuse to call them medical experts. I just call them Chinese because we are not sure who they are or what they are. I mean... With all these things, we have about loan agreement with China, this and that. And of course, I'm not one of those that demonize China or demonize Chinese. But I think our government has not been up to par. They need to come out clean. And I hope our colleagues will dig for that. Because I, there's just something behind this, uh, the old charade, what we are witnessing. It's bad. It's bad. Oh, all right. Still, okay. still, on, still, still on the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniwe. He said the medical personnel are not guests of the federal government. But we do remember clearly when he made a statement and even was one of those who went to welcome them upon their arrival and said they were guests no, of the CCECC company. You told us they were, they were your guests as the minister. And remember, the Nigerian Medical Association, our body of doctors, spoke against their coming. Now, I think with the benefit of hindsight, 
Perhaps the NMA knew that these guys were not going to be who they told us they were. And it's so unfortunate, it's very unfair. And you see, they, are, they don't know that this is detaching from the serious message that COVID-19 is real. Because when you surround yourself with this kind of charade, with this kind of uh, inanities, people don't take you serious. And it's detaching from the public communication component of this pandemic uh, stuff. And it's very sad. Now, if you can recall also that the 15-member team of Chinese medical personnel, or experts, if I may say, arrived the country on April 8th, and the federal government, through the Minister of Health, did say they were here to share their experiences in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, yes. Now, what could have informed a change of this affirmation, even from the federal government? And now we have the House of Rep probing the minister to come out clean on, on the status quo of this medical Chinese team. Kudos to our representatives. It's one of those very, very rare moments that they cover themselves in gold. And I think this is very good. I hope they will get to the bottom of this. And I hope they will ask the probing questions. And I hope they will give Nigerians the feedback. On a TV station yesterday night, I watched the honorable member that moved that motion. And he, he spoke very glowingly. He spoke very candidly. And I hope they will see the end of this business. They will not just, I hope they will not cut it in abeyance. Let's know what is exactly happening. And, I, I mean, and I'm curious. If I tell you one thing I'm curious about, what exactly is their destination? Remember, we have had issues of these foreign companies especially Chinese companies, abusing the expert trade quota. We've got people who are technicians, who are technologists, posting as engineers. We've got people who have no pedigree, as it were, who have no academic qualifications that are now making, I mean, they come here on the expert trade quota, they abuse the expert trade quota, they come here on different visa. I remember one picture that was circulated on social media some years back, where we have a policeman holding an umbrella for a Chinese person. And those are the kind of uh, the, the kind of contemptible way they treat Nigerians, people in our own country. And remember again, about a month back, we got a consul general in Beijing, I think, protesting about the human treatment Chinese. I mean, the, the Chinese who are meeting out in Nigeria. So we need to tie this, this thing up. And I hope our of us will actually get to the bottom and they will give Nigerians the outcome of their findings. The minister definitely must obey their summer. That's all. All right, and also joining us via phone is Bjordan Showmi. Thank you, Bjordan Showmi, for joining us also on the show. Bjordan Showmi, political analyst, can you hear me? All right, so let, let me get back to you, Mr. Wale Fatade. Now, doesn't this action in, in so many ways indict the federal government of, of gross irresponsibility, not knowing what their true mission is or their whereabouts at any given point in the country until now? It, it, it shows the, the utter disregard our, our, our political leaders are for us. It shows the contemptible way the government treats citizens. And it shows the, the opacity or the opaqueness surrounding the activities of people in government. Forgetting that these people are in government on our behalf, they serve on our behalf, they serve at our pleasure. But now we, we do not know what is happening. And you begin to ask questions, you begin to wonder what other things are the government hiding from us about COVID-19. Sincerely, we've got to be asking questions. What exactly do they know that we don't know? What exactly do they know that we should know? And what exactly do they know that will help Nigeria as we move forward? Because all of us are involved in this battle, whether you are in government or not in government. I was speaking earlier today with a senior doctor, and he was telling me, he's, and he's not known to be flippant, he was telling me that people, some of people in government are seeing this period as a time of making extra bucks, as a time of making money. When we have a pandemic situation on our hands that nobody knows how it will end. Oh. And so it shows that for some people, it is business as usual. And All right, let me, let me, okay, let me interject there, Mr. Wale Fata, and bring, and bring on, let me bring on Bjordan Showmi, a political analyst. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Bjordan Showmi, how are you? Mr. Showmi, are you there? Can you hear me, Mr. Showmi? Uh, I think I'll just have to go, Mr. Wale Fatade, still. Now, if you also recall, Mr. Wale Fatade, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, reportedly said on May 4 that the Chinese doctors have started <laughs> working in isolation centers, helping the country in capacity building. But yet, the nation has heard nothing as to the contribution of, of the supposedly Chinese medical team and their supposed medical expertise. What are they not telling us here, Mr. Wale Fatade? Well, as you know, I don't speak for the federal government. And the people sadly with the job of providing information for us or to us 
have not been exactly beyond uh, above board in this matter. Now, how many isolation centers have been built since that time? Remember, we got the one built by this day in Abuja, donated as part of their complex, and we all saw that. And we saw the one that Dan Gutier and the other people donated in Kano. Yes. And I'm not sure they were involved in Kano. So it was only after the fact they told us they were part of those that helped in building the war in Abuja. Beyond that, what else? All right, and fin finally, yes, Mr. Yes. Wale Fatari, finally, the House of Representatives also said that before the coming of the Chinese medical team, COVID-19 data stood at about 254 confirmed cases, with 44 successfully treated by the Nigerian medical personnel, with only six deaths who reportedly had other underlying ailments. But as of today, the data stands at about 5,959 cases with 182 deaths. Doesn't it give rise any room for the suspicions which already many Nigerians have expressed about the rising cases of COVID-19 related to the coming of um, this Chinese medical team? Quickly, your reaction, please. Well, uh, I remember the immortal words of the late uh, Chiba Okadibo, where he said that statistics, statistics rather, is like beginning. They actually cover more than they reveal. Now, you, you can't treat statistics like that. And I hope Nigerians did not, were not thinking that these Chinese folks will actually come and stem the tide of COVID. No, they're not going to do that. It's up to us as Nigerians, it's up to our leaders, it's up to us as citizens to find ways of stopping the transmission of this pandemic. That's all. The Chinese are not coming here to do anything. We've seen that. I mean, and I hope people know again that about two days ago, there's another wave of COVID-19 brewing in China now that they're actually isolating about two cities. And so it's, it's, it's not just that they can't do more than, you can't give what you don't have. Social and political analyst, Mr. Wale Fatade, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure having you join us. My pleasure, too. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us. The National Orientation Agency has said it will provide toll-free numbers to the public to report misconduct of security personnel frustrating the lockdown effort of the federal government and the ban on interstate travels. The Director General of the NOA, Dr. Garba Abari, said the initiative is a collaboration with the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission and other related matters, ICPC, and is aimed at checking the cases of security personnel collecting bribes at the various checkpoints nationwide. The lockdown was initially effective but subsequently it waned in efficacy, especially in cities where enforcement measures were concentrated. However, in the suburban and the rural areas, businesses continued almost as usual, despite the lockdown. Many religious centers or most religious centers complied with the ban on gatherings, especially in the cities. But in the suburban and the rural areas, religious gathering still continues as usual. Security operatives in some states are compromising the ban on interstate movement by accepting inducement and in extent granting travelers easy passage. As part of efforts to address this, the NOA is partnering with the Independent Corrupt Practices and the other related offenses commission, ICPC, to provide toll-free numbers, to provide toll-free numbers to enable Nigerians report such misconducts. My take. According to the Council on Foreign Relations, over a thousand people were killed by security agents in the country over the past year. The Nigerian Human Rights Commission, the NHRC, a government agency, said it had found eight separate incidents of extrajudicial killings leading to 18 deaths. In total, the group said it received more than 100 complaints across 24 of Nigeria's 36 states, including Lagos, Ogun, and Abuja, the federal capital territory. I ask, why are the people with the responsibility to enforce laws and keep us safe harassing, extorting, and even killing us? And with the pandemic which needs the services of essential workers like our health practitioners, journalists, and the likes, aren't even spared the shameful embarrassment. Police harassment, brutality, and extortion and killing seems to be a default setting in the very foundation of our security architecture. 
I believe these individuals who have our lives in their hands are trained with the mindset of having power rather than actually serving the Nigerian citizens. I ask that the Inspector General of Police instruct his officers and put them in the clear about the presidential order which supersedes his own and mandate them to do accordingly. And with the amount of fear and uncertainty that beclouds this time, we the Nigerian citizens consider that as session servants do not need to go about our duties in fear of possible manhandling by those who have the primary goal of protecting us in the light of the imposed curfew and the presidential directive. We deserve better. And last week, Thursday, 14 May, the Nigerian Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniwe, was reported as saying that he knows nothing about the whereabouts of this same team of Chinese medical experts he had personally announced were invited to Nigeria by the federal government to combat the COVID-19 outbreak in Nigeria. It is, however, one month since the arrival of these Chinese doctors, yet there is no clarification from either the Federal Ministry of Health or the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 on their role and positive input in the fight against the pandemic in the country. I think the inability of the federal government to do this has fueled the unnecessary antagonism, suspicion and disbelief to their real purpose of being here and normal humanitarian nature of their visit. My question is, why did the federal government say they invited them and only to turn around to say otherwise? Will it be left for the Chinese firm to announce details of the mission or why they're here? Why was the government also absent? And why was their whereabouts unknown until Nigerians started probing and why would the Minister of Health ask reporters not to ask him about their whereabouts? What needs to be stated, no matter whose ox is God, is that the government has to be clear in its messaging. You can't just announce such a sensitive visit without giving details and feedbacks. They should, right from the day of the announcement, have provided answers to the questions the citizens will be asking privately. And failure to do this only will breed suspicion in any time government obfuscates, then confusion reigns. This is the lesson coming from this visit of the Chinese doctors. And that's all for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus, politics returns tomorrow, same time. In the meantime, be safe and be well.